As described in the story of Lord Vishnu, when the lords and demons were churning the ocean, they derived the sweet nectar of immortality, the Amrita. Along with the Amrita came a beautiful maiden. She was Lakshmi. Seated on a dew-drenched lotus, dressed in red silk, bedecked in gold, she was the very embodiment of affluence, abundance and auspiciousness. As she rose, the sweet nectar began flowing in every direction. The earth pulsated with life and joy filled the air. The gods saluted her. Even the demons sang songs to her glory. Sacred elephants that hold up the sky came from the eight quarters of the universe, raised their trunks and consecrated her with life-sustaining water. Look, who is that? Amazing! We are not able to visualize the brightness. She appears like a diamond damsel. She has come from the ocean. Who could she be? My wishes to you. I am Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, happiness and prosperity. Oh goddess, we are greatly delighted. We welcome you to Indra Loka. Lakshmi saw Mahavishnu and was immediately swept away by his charm. Greetings to you, my lord. You have struggled so much for taking the sweet nectar Amrita. The gods are happy now. But you have put all your efforts without expecting anything. I do my duty. I don't expect anything in return. I want everyone to be happy. That's what I need. Goddess Lakshmi was completely magnetized with the unassuming quality of Lord Vishnu. Lakshmi sought someone who would not succumb to the allure of power, pleasure and prosperity. Someone strong, wise and virtuous, capable of using foes, charm and guile with discretion to uphold the laws of life. So, she chose Vishnu and she wanted to marry him. My Lord, I long for your love and affection. I love to be with you forever. Will you accept me? Lakshmi, you were born for me. You will be my devoted wife from now on. Lakshmi placed the fragrant garland of victory round Vishnu's neck and made him her consort. He became Srinatha, beloved of fortune. Vishnu placed the symbol of Lakshmi on his chest. Their abode, Vaikuntha, became the pivot of the universe. Vishnu battled the forces of chaos and corruption and diligently performed his duties as guardian of the world, pleasing Lakshmi who rewarded him with her love and affection, tending to his every need as his devoted wife. Long ago, there lived a boy named Prahlada. Prahlada was a virtuous and a righteous boy.
virtue means good character and good behavior. He was an ardent devotee of Lord Vishnu. But he was born to a Rakshasa king by name Hiranya. He was full of pride and arrogance. He wanted the entire kingdom to worship him alone and utter his name. Hiranya. 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 The people in his kingdom did not have any other choice. Out of fear, everyone were worshipping him. His son Prahalada, in spite of his father's forcefulness, denied to tell his father's name or pray him. Finally, Hiranya decided to kill his son. Lord Vishnu rescued him by killing Hiranya. Prahalada was highly virtuous and he became the master of the three worlds. He was a lovable devotee of Vishnu. which made Lord Indra to grow jealous. He approached his Guru Brihaspati and narrated everything. Please help me Guru. Prahlad is full of pride. He is able to conquer everyone. He is acting smart because he thinks that Lord Vishnu will always support him. Indra Lakshmi will reside in a place of virtue. You did not maintain your virtue while Prahalada is a virtuous man. Therefore, he is able to rule all the three worlds. Then tell me the nature of virtue. Brihaspati told him a few precepts and asked him to go to sage Shukracharya if he wanted to know more. Indra went to Shukracharya. Greetings Guru. I have been sent by sage Brihaspati to know about virtue from you. Welcome Indra. Prahalada knows well the real nature of virtue. He knows it and practices it. You can learn from him directly. Then why have I been asked to come here, Guru? Do not get angry, Indra. This is the main reason for your failure and unhappiness. Alright, Guru. I will meet him and know about Vichyam. Indra disguised himself as a Brahmin and approached Prahalada. Hey, Brahmin. Who are you? My lord, I am a poor Brahmin. I have come here to know what virtue is all about from you. Interesting. But I am not a teacher. I don't feel like sending you back when you have come with a request. My lord, please permit me to be with you and help you in your daily work. That's fine, but what work can I give you? My lord, I will be near you. I will complete whatever work you ask me to do. Alright, you can be with me from today. From then on, Lord Indra in the form of a Brahmin became close to Prahalada. He was behaving like a student. 
he attended to all his needs and was highly obedient. Prahlada had complete control over his body, conquered anger and maintained good behavior. Indra was convinced that it was only due to virtue that Prahlada got the kingdom of heaven. Indra wanted to divert Prahlada from his righteous state. Indra understood that he could not hope to get the kingdom of heaven unless Prahlada was diverted from the path of virtue. One day, pleased with Indra's enthusiasm and devotion, Prahlada called upon Indra. Dear Brahman, I admire your devotion. What do you want? Make a request and I will grant it. Indra was waiting for such an opportunity. Will you give me whatever I ask for? Sure, anything. I will give it. I have never uttered a lie. My Lord, make me a gift of your virtue. Prahalada was completely shattered. He prepared himself to tread the unrighteous way if necessity arose. On the whole, he lost his firm resolve regarding virtue. Indra gladly walked away. Prahalada lost his peace of mind. He prayed to Goddess Lakshmi. Oh mother, till this day, I have led a virtuous and righteous life. I should become unfaithful to it from today. I would rather die instead of leaving the path of virtue. Suddenly, a super brilliance came out of his body and formed a separate body. Who are you? I am the God of virtue. You forsook me. You have given me as a gift to that Brahmin. I will stay with that Brahmin henceforth. Narayana, please take me away. Immediately, a glow of light appeared. Goddess appeared in front of him. Who are you, my lord? Prahlada, I am Lakshmi Devi. I reside where there is virtue, righteousness and truth. Goddess, you are Lakshmi, the goddess of the world? Why do you want to go away from me? Who was that Brahman who was serving me? Indra himself had come in the guise of a Brahman. I am greatly honored to have Lord Indra as my student. But no, I have lost everything. Please, do not leave me. Even though you have given away your virtue, you have not given it for any pleasure. Your virtue is always appreciated. As long as you feel that you long to be virtuous, you will never make a mistake. Till that time, none can cheat you and I will be with you. Thank you, Mother. Prahalada fell to the feet of the Goddess. The Goddess blessed him. Till his last day, he reigned supremacy in all his endeavors. Prahalada's son was Virochana and his son was Emperor Bali. Bali was a very powerful king. He was very kind and pious in his youth. Goddess Lakshmi gave him all prosperity. 
as he was becoming victorious in everything, he turned haughty. He didn't care for anyone on earth. He was overconfident and believed that nothing was impossible in the world. He fought against everyone and captured their kingdoms. People who wanted peace were mercilessly killed for power and money. He fought against Indra. and became the head of the heavens, driving him away. Lord Indra went pleading to Bali. Bali, you have conquered everything. You have not left anything for us. If you ask us to leave, where will we go? <laughs> Devendra, you have come to the stage of begging. Get away from here. Go ask Vishnu. He will give you land. Lakshmi, who was with him all these days, could not bear this arrogance. She left him instantly. Devendra approached Lord Vishnu. My Lord, look at my state. I don't have anything now. I have become a beggar. Being the Lord of Gods, I am begging for my kingdom from the demons. It is all because of your support and the grace of Mother Lakshmi, they gain supremacy. Indra, if you are perfect, none can take away the wealth and powers from you, even if someone wants to. My Lord, you always support others, not me. Devendra, when his grandfather Prahalada was there, you cheated him and got his virtue. You took your kingdom, but again, you were not in your righteous path. Seeing you, your people also became arrogant. So, Lakshmi had to leave Indraloka. If you are perfect, none can trouble you or conquer you. My lord, please forgive me. I am thrown out from Indraloka. I approached Bali to give my kingdom back, but he sent me back to ask you, all right, Devendra, go back to Bali and ask him again. My lord, he doesn't treat me well. It'll be a great shame if I go back to him again. Indra, go only once and ask him for land. He will give you. I will be there to rescue you. Mother Lakshmi, please forgive me. I will never make any mistake out of my arrogance. Please don't leave our place. You will get all prosperity. Indra approached Bali for his land. Bali, I have come again to beg of your charity. At that moment, Lord Vishnu took the form of a dwarf Brahmin and stood in the assembly hall along with the general public. A saint in Bali's kingdom informs Bali that the dwarf Brahman is Lord Vishnu himself. Knowing this, Bali became highly arrogant. Devendra, so you have come with a supporter to recommend you. Ask that dwarf to walk three feet and you can have that land. Bali, three feet land? What will I do with it? Hey, Devendra, the three feet land measured by the feet of this dwarf is more than sufficient for you. Get away from here with that. Vishnu, in the form of a dwarf, became huge. And placed his one step on the lands, another step on the waters. There was no place for him to keep the other step. He wanted to keep it upon Bali's head. 
Bali trembled with fear and ran off, leaving the entire kingdom to Indra. Indra took back the land and resumed his position as the king of heaven. My lord, I am grateful to you forever. Everything happened so fast and I never expected that I would be able to get back my kingdom. Once Lakshmi left him, there was nothing else for him. Thank you, my lord. Mother, everything is like a dream to me. You were with him all along, but suddenly he is nothing. Why is that? Indra, I am Dhanalakshmi. Everybody in this world tries to seek my favor. I reside with righteous people. Bali's grandfather is Prahlada. He was an ardent devotee of Lord Vishnu. Even the demons in his time were righteous. When Bali became king, he was righteous. I lived in him. But his hunger for power had no boundaries. So I abandoned him and came here to live with you. Oh mother, do tell me where I can always find you. I admire the brave and those who show determination to do any work they undertake. I stay in the houses of people who pursue education and those who serve devotees of God. I bless those who have conquered anger, people who are not envious, those who take pity on others in difficulties and help them. I do not approach lazy, short-tempered and ambitious people. I stay away from people whose houses are not clean and those who are lazy. Thank you, Mother. I shall uphold your words let the entire world know of the power of your virtue. Long, long ago, there was a king in Jaisalmer whose name was Rawal Prithvi Singh. His kingdom was very prosperous. He built his capital with latticed windows and large palaces. He also captured some of his neighboring kingdoms. His success made him unreasonable, foolish and haughty. One day, while he was in his darbar, a merchant came to him and showed him some valuable and precious jewels as he wanted to sell to the members of the royal family. Rawal wanted to sway the merchant with his richness. My lord, how do you like these jewels? They are excellent, but I don't know what to do with these jewels. My lord, will you not be wearing them? Gold and diamonds are shattered in this palace. I don't want to send you with disappointment. Let me take these jewels. Thank you, my lord. The king took the jewels and threw it into the dustbin. The entire palace was shocked. Listen all, none should take these jewels. It should be thrown to the dust. The person who takes it will be punished. Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, was completely annoyed with this violent and ruthless behavior. She wanted to teach the silly king a lesson. She drove him towards gambling. As a result, Prithvi Singh lost all his wealth and kingdom. He lost everything and came to the streets with his wife and child.
Rohini, I have brought our entire family to the streets. Will you forgive me? My lord, forget about the past. Think of what we should do to go back to the normal life. Where will we go now? We will not be in the city. We will go to the city of Patan. With a heavy heart, they walked for many days till they reached Patan city. They decided to stay on the outskirts of the city. No one in the city knew their background. Prithvi was not able to get even good food for the family. He thought about all his arrogance and the way he had ill-treated people. He was pleading forgiveness for all his sins. Rohini, his wife, was a woman of great beauty and devotion. She realized that all this trouble was on account of the divine curse. She was a devotee of Lord Vishnu. To stave off her bad days, she began fasting for Goddess Lakshmi. One day, as she was praying, Oh, Mother Lakshmi, what sin has my child committed? He doesn't even have milk to drink. I can starve for days, but what can I tell my child? Please be courteous to us. What my husband did was wrong, but we have suffered enough. Mother, please help us. After her puja, she came out of her hut to worship the Tulsi tree. After praying, just as she was about to get in, she saw a dead snake. Right then, an eagle appeared. It was holding a necklace in its beak. As soon as the eagle saw the dead snake, it dropped the necklace, picked up the snake and flew away. Rohini deemed it a boon from God. The necklace belonged to the Queen of Patan. The eagles picked it up as the Queen was bathing at a pond. It was lying there with the clothes of the Queen. When she came out of the pond, the Queen could not understand how her necklace had disappeared. My Lord, that was my lucky necklace. I must have it back. Don't worry. We will announce a reward for the person who finds it. You will certainly get it back. An announcement was made all around the city about the loss of the necklace. A handsome reward was promised to the person who could get the necklace back. In the evening, Rawal Prithvi Singh went to the market to find himself amidst an excited crowd. What is happening? Why is there so much commotion? What is everybody talking about? The queen lost her necklace near the pond and a big reward will be given to the person who finds it. King Prithvi returned home with a heavy heart. He narrated the incident to his wife. When she heard this, Rohini's joy knew no bounds. She, in return, told him how she got the necklace. In the morning, both husband and wife went to the palace. Madam, greetings to you. When I was praying outside my hut, I saw a dead snake. Just then I saw an eagle carrying this jewel in its beak. As he saw the snake, he threw the jewel, took the snake and flew away. Interesting. I am really glad that you have brought the necklace back. I appreciate your sincerity and truthfulness. 
ask me for anything that you might want and I shall give it to you. Rohini Ask for what you want. Lands, jewels, gold coins, royal clothes. Ask for what your heart desires. My Lord, please do not misunderstand me. I do not want money or land. All I want is for all the houses in the city including the palace to not have any lamps lit on the night of the full moon. Those who want to light lamps may come to my hut and light them around it. It is quite an unusual request. And how will you benefit from this? I will tell you on the day of the full moon. Her request was granted. The day of the full moon came. The whole city was instructed not to light lamps. Even the palace was completely dark. Rohini's hut alone shone bright with lamps. She prayed and waited for Goddess Lakshmi. The Goddess appeared before her and was about to enter her hut. Mother, I wish to ask you for something before you enter my house. I have suffered immensely, so has my child has also suffered. You must always be with me. Please do not leave our house ever again. Rohini, there is darkness everywhere. Only your house is brightly lit. I shall enter your house. You have your intelligence to thank for this. I shall never leave your house again. With great happiness, Rohini fell to the feet of the goddess. Sri Lakshmi blessed her. From that day forth, the family received all the wealth they could imagine. The king got his kingdom back and ruled wisely with his wife and child by his side.